All right, guys, what's going on? And welcome to the video. So we're going to be doing a session with the uh, Kanonen Jagdpanzer 105. I really, really like this vehicle, guys, because of its mobility um, and its ability basically to be flexible during um, the course of any battle on any you know, map, really. It's just very, very flexible, and I enjoy it for that reason pretty much alone, right? I mean, it's just when you can move around the map very quickly, that really makes the tank um, able to carry many games really I, I feel like mobility in this game is becoming one of those things that's almost necessary to be able to carry a game because of the amount of vehicles that are in the game that are just fast as hell now um, even heavies some heavies are doing like 40 something kilometers an hour um so when you have a tank that has high mobility, especially one that hits pretty hard, you know, uh, a TD like this with good accuracy, really high pen, it's just a lot of fun in my opinion. Um, one drawback of this vehicle is that it's obviously turretless, so you do have to be, you know, facing your whole tank towards the enemy. There's no armor, um, and you know the gun depression isn't really that good. The accuracy control you a bit and you know all these things the view range really isn't that good like you throw optics on this this is a tier 8 and i have optics in a scouting slot right um and optical calibration with situational awareness at 91 percent and we don't have recon but still we're only getting 432 view range out of that but i'm not going to really complain about that um this tank has good strengths so that's why i enjoy it i've too marked this thing since i last did a video on it um we are currently at 86.64% on the mark. I am averaging just under 1,800 damage over 206 battles. I have a 56% win rate in this tank. We've gotten quite a few masteries um, in it. I want to say like four or five or something like that. It might even be more than that. It's whatever you need, I think, to get the third mastery mark. I think that's like six or seven masteries, maybe something like that, guys. Um, but... Without further ado, guys, let's get into the um, games. And one more thing to mention, yeah, the concealment on this vehicle, absolutely insane if you're stationary. You're basically invisible. 48% concealment is what I have. Um, and we're not even running like low noise exhaust or anything like that. So here we go. We're going to be on Lakeville. Lakeville is a good map, in my opinion, for a TD. It's not great, but it's good. And we're going to make it work. So um, rammer optics and also the um, aiming thing i don't think i mentioned this at the beginning that's how i run it guys there's no second configuration i just run the one configuration and i run rations and i have a little bit more apcrs i i like the apcrs more than the heat but the heat is necessary when you're facing like tier 9 and 10 heavies it's 330 freaking pen i believe we'll take a look yeah, 330 millimeters of penetration on the heats and 268 on the APCRs. And look at the shell velocity on the APCRs. This is another thing to mention, guys. So, yeah, absolutely incredible shell velocity. I mean, just incredible. So we're going to come up to here. I kind of like this area. I'm hoping I'm not going to be spotted here. And it doesn't even look like there's any light tanks, so I see someone right here. I'm just gonna take a shot and run. Because I don't want to be here if there's no lights. If we had a light tank on our team, I'd be a little bit more comfortable, but I am not, so I am not comfortable here. So we're gonna run this way. Um get on top of this hill probably, and then I'm gonna see you kind of what we can do from here if we're spotted. Whoa. And yeah, talking about the speed on this thing, guys, sometimes it's almost too much and it can overwhelm you like that. But if I sit here, basically, and just don't move, we are at almost 50% concealment. So someone would have to get very close to spot us, you know, sitting here if we're not moving. And even then, if we're moving, it's like 30% or something. So I'm very comfortable here, guys. And I, I will sit here almost indefinitely i really don't have a problem with that but it's really just going to be a matter of where we have shots because there's no light tanks and like nothing is being spotted i might just take a blind shot somewhere over here it looks like a tree fell i'm not spotted from that i 
I know that one hit dirt. I'm going to go back to where I was, guys, just because I kind of want to support our heavies. I'm hoping no one presses the mid. That's really my only concern. Um, JP looks like he's coming this way as well. And yeah, this is kind of what I want to see, like a Progetto like this. Like people over in this area. Do we have any shots going here? We'd have to move a little bit to the right, probably. But they have the shots, so I'll let them take the shots. And I'll move up here and try and look for a shot on the Progetto, maybe. Alright. I'm just not lined up well for these shots, so I'm going to come back to where the JP is, and... Try not to get in the way of these guys, but I'd like to get shots maybe into these heavies. We're going to load heats. Yeah, these guys really need the support, so... So, I believe that wasn't a penetration, just on what he said there. Or like, just out of the render range, I think. I'm kind of getting used to the German voice and kind of what it means. Yeah. From this range, I'm not surprised. This is definitely going to be a loss. <laughs> I'd like to try and run in there and help these guys, but there's really not much more we can do. I'm just heavily overwhelmed here. Um, I'm going to try and back up this IS-2 here. Keep heat loaded, that's fine. guy is getting wrecked. I'm hoping this guy will stay alive long enough so that I can at least get one shot into someone here. Okay. Let's see if we can spot one of these guys coming around. That's unfortunate. Okay. I have nowhere to go. This entire this entire team broke down very, very quickly. Okay. That's it guys, that's really all I could do. Um there were no shots really anywhere else, so I mean, 704 damage, whatever. We'll we'll get into the next game, see how we can do. Um, and yeah, this is what sucks about playing TDs sometimes, is even with a flexible TD such as this, there were no shots, really, until the very end of the game, really. I mean, and this happens. Maybe very, very good players are able to get into positions where they can get a couple shots in, but this is how I kind of started playing TDs. I don't want to say I've watched and learned from people playing TDs, because I don't watch a lot of streamers play Tank Destroyers. But just from watching other people play, you know, in all the games that I play, I that's kind of how I play my TDs. So 
you know, perhaps there was a better way to play that, but we get two shots off, and regardless, even if we got three, four, five thousand damage this game, that was clearly going to be a loss. I mean, we got absolutely stomped, so we did get a, well, at least one blind shot there. Um, it looks like it was on the T25 AT, and it was an average roll, so we did do a thousand damage. That's not terrible. All right, let's get into the second battle. And yeah, anyway, just just to finish my thought, guys. Like when you play tank destroyers, there's only there's only so much you can do to help when you have no armor. You know what I mean? Especially when you're a turretless tank. So you have to be far enough back and to, you know be playing defensively enough where you're not going to get just picked off by a bunch of you know tanks and die you know like that. Because I've seen it happen, especially on maps like this, where you're just too aggressive and you know, it doesn't pay off. So, on this map, I think what I'm going to do is try and get... F7 is an option. Like this area right here. That's this mound right here. But I don't really like it um, right here. I'm trying to sneak in between these guys. They're really just like not going to let me do that. So, LTTB is going to take the bush, it looks like. I like coming here in pretty much all of my tank destroyers. I just feel like it's a kind of a good spot to get some initial shots off and stuff. And, you know, it's a pretty flexible position. You have shots at a lot of different areas. basically just try and ping this Indian Panzer and see if perhaps I can get a shot into this guy by pinging the map. I learned this from skill. How about a shot right here? I don't know if the light tank is there or not. Doesn't look like it. Probably would be spotted if 12T was sitting there. I'm very comfortable right here, guys. I don't think we need to do anything other than just be patient and kind of wait things out here. Um, WZ is in the mid here. Let's see if we can get a shot in this guy. He's not really exposing himself enough. Batch at 12T is up here. This LTTB needs to be really careful because if he dies, we're going to be in trouble. Like, this map is all about light tanks, man. He's being way too aggressive. Like, if I were him, I would just be sitting right in this bush. He's pretty much a one-shot. Ah, uh, excuse me, guys. He's a one-shot to, like, everything on the map, so... Our 703s are pushing this very, very hard, so I'm waiting for them to spot something here. Okay, these guys are just really aggressively pushing this when there's still people in here. I I don't understand this play, but maybe it'll work. Okay, veterans here. Hmm. That was my fault. Good. Got a redemption shot because the the shell velocity is so fast on this thing, I forget sometimes, guys, and I'll put it like ahead of the tank, and then I forget. It's 1,500 meters a second. You know, we said this at the beginning, 1,478 meters a second. I mean, it's just absurdly fast. So this guy's trying to run. Put one right there. And the play that the 7032 has made is actually surprisingly working. TVP is right here. Jeez, man. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> this gun raised. Okay. 
We're going to clean up him, and yeah, this is going to be a pretty quick game, it looks like, guys. We're going to start rushing this part of the map. Only the CS-52 list is unlit, and the Lorraine, so at this point, I think we can push up with everybody else. Indian is here. Do I have a shot at this guy? I think if I get, like, further over here, he'll probably be dead by the time I stop and go to take a shot. Samu is here. I kind of want to get over into this corner. Samu is pushing in. I don't want him to spot me. Okay. And yeah, talk about the flexibility, guys. Like, look at this crap, man. The 112 is here. Okay. I'm going to load some heats. Try and sit, like, right here. Shouldn't be spotted. I think the 112, the list is too far, and the 112 is behind the bush, so. so this guy gets behind a tree or something. Actually, I'm just gonna take this. Yeah, he should be far enough away. Okay. 112 is lit again. Okay. I think he's the last tank left over here. Oh, there's the Lorraine. Okay. We're going to go back to APCRs because I shot a lot of heat that I didn't really have to shoot. Just try and throw this guy off. I'm going to run back this direction. He is dead. We're at 2,500 damage, guys. This game is looking much better than the first. And now we're just going to go after these three remaining tanks on the hill. And the thing is with this tank is it's easy to pick up damage, guys, because you can actually, like... I don't think this shot is going to be clean on the AMX, so we're going to keep going up. But you could... You can be flexible like this, where, like, look how quick we get here. Now we can support the T-69 as these guys come back down. Okay, clean up the AMX. And who's going to get the kill shot? Already misses. I'm betting the T-69 picks this up. He does. Nice. All right, that's it. So we got 2,700 damage, 700 spotting that game. Much better than the first game. And that should balance things out. We'll play a third and let's see how it goes, guys. We're at 18 minutes on the video. That's not bad. I try and keep these videos to like 30-ish minutes, but it really, it's very dependent on the matchmaking. Like oh, I can play two 15-minute games or four, you know, seven and a half minute games. You just never know what you're going to get into. 2749 damage and that balanced it out to 1913 damage that's not bad all right let's go again let's go again i also believe i have full um configuration on this tank wow man I don't think I've ever gotten Malinovka and Prokhorovka back-to-back, ever. I don't think that's ever happened to me, guys. For real. Like, I, I... Someone in Wargaming is looking out for me right now. Because a TD is good for both of these maps. I would much rather be in a light tank. Because, you know me, I love light tanks. This map, though, there's a lot of pressure put on you, you know, as a light tank. Like, I really feel, as a good light tank player, every time I get Prok Prokhorovka, I feel the pressure, you know? I really do. Alright. So, I'm going to actually, I'm hoping no one else takes this position, I'm going to try and take this spot up here. It's a little aggressive, and if people go to the mid, you have to be really careful of that. But I'm going to take it. Um, it's worked the last couple times I've gotten Prokhorovka, so we'll see if it works this time. And there's no lights either, which is wild, guys. There's no light tanks. So 
in this scenario, we can almost play as a light tank here. Going to do his skill showed me. Centurions here. There we go. Oh, dude, you are not going to sit right here. This is so bad. This guy's. This guy's going to kill me, man. Or get me killed. It's definitely worth taking a shot there. I really want this guy to move because I want to sit here so I can spot if anyone's coming up. So, you know what I mean? The one line. This guy is like literally could not be in an any worse spot and we're spotted. So now if I was sitting in this bush, I probably wouldn't be lit and chances are I could probably get a jump on spotting this end. This is why I just, I, I try and be nice, but this is like so bad, man. Because see now I'm spotted, the defender has a shot on me. There's just so many things that are now going to go wrong because this guy is sitting here and I don't want to be rude, but this is just like, this is, this is a game killer for me. Like we could be doing so well in this position right now, but... But it's all right. We'll work through it, guys. We're going to go here. And, um, you know, we'll just kind of play more passively for the time being. I'm going to switch to APCRs. Chances of that going in were slim to none, but it's worth a shot. Viper got spotted. Might have been by the Centurion. I'm going to go back to Heat because I feel like the only shots we're going to really be able to get is on the Centurion. And the Heat is sort of necessary to pen this guy in the turret. This is tough, man. I'm kind of hoping this S1 will move up just a little bit. He might have moved up just a hair. So that he could spot people that are coming down this way, you know. I'm hoping he has Binox. I think he's spotting the Centurion. Or it could be the VK too. We have to be patient here, guys. There's just not much more I could do at this time. There's still a lot of people on lit on the map. Here we go, ISM. Where is this guy? This guy's like right on the edge of the ridge. All right. I'm trying to think of where else I could go in this situation. I 
really don't think there's anything, guys. I'm just going to hang out here because... Like, this is still a close game, and I don't want to die. I want to use... I want to be able to use my mobility at the end of the game if it's needed. I'll go to APCRs. We're spamming heats. So I don't, I don't want to do that the whole game. There's still Borisk, ISU, Scorpion, STRV, T28, and Viper that have all not been lit. And I guarantee you that almost all of them are sitting in this area. Because these guys are already past the midpoint of the east, and they haven't spotted anything else. And there's no light tanks. So this is... It could be kind of nerve-wracking, but at the same time, I feel like it's a very even game because when there's no light tanks, it's really like anybody could spot, right? And I could try and spot. The thing is, this tank has no armor, and I don't want to make that kind of a... Like, you could spot in this vehicle. If you do it very, very early in the game, maybe you can get to a bush and spot. But you want to be very, very cautious in doing it even, like, mid-game. If you need to do it towards the end of the game, that's when to do it. You know what I mean? Like, where is this guy? There's ice here. These guys must all be behind, like, dead tanks or something, because I can't... Here we go. It's not a hit, but it's a pretty far shot, so I'm not going to be mad about that. There we go. situation. Need to get out of here. We have to try and defend the base at least. And like this TS-5 and the T-34-2 are really in bad areas right now. If they can kind of stay alive over there, we might have a chance, but I don't know. Let's see. knock this tree like that. We'll kind of sit right here. I would rarely give up the entire one line, but the thing is, in this situation, we're the only person that's over there. Like, we don't even have anyone in the mid. The 112 is all the way over here, and now he just died. So, like, we're completely on our own here. So, like, it really depends on the circumstances, but right now, like, we need to kind of... Alright. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, and this is why I left, right, guys? So, we were able to track him at the end there, but... Ultimately, I wanted to get one more shot into him there. Um, but yeah, like, even if we ran this way, um, like, we could have tried to get on this hill, but at this at the, this point, the game's over. And from that hill, I don't think you even have the render range to be able to defend the base. So, I think we played that well. There's really not much else I could have done. Um, I personally think if we were in the position that the S1 was in, we could have had maybe a slightly better game. Um might have been able to get some spotting damage but this is what i mean about like playing random battles like i try and be very kind to people but that he was just literally in the worst spot for me because if i get spotted and try and back down he's in the way and i he, you know i can't i can't back down so it's 
the smarter play for me to just move and try and find another area. Um, but yeah, 2,000 damage, guys. Like, that's kind of my goal in this tank. My goal is to get 2,000 plus damage. Um, and in some battles, it's just, you, you just can't do it. It's just not the case, right? Like, the battle we played on Lakeville, I mean, that was just really bad. And the shots just weren't there. So, if the shots aren't there and you lose drastically, then you can't really blame yourself. So. I had a lot of pizza earlier, and I'm so thirsty. So, what are we at? We are at 30 minutes exactly on this video, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here, guys. STRV S1 had 5,000 damage, so this is what I mean. Like, that position is very, very powerful. I'll give it to him. He played a really, really good game. I'll give him that position. Whatever, you know, it's all good. Um, and... Um, you know, no complaints, no regrets type thing. So this this tank can make decent money. It's just I'm shooting a lot of heat um, just because of the circumstances. And also we lost this game. So, But I would highly recommend this tank to anyone who's good with, you know, knowing the maps and knowing where to go. And, um, you know, just... just a, a, this tank is not super forgiving, is what I'm saying. I wouldn't go out and buy it if you're brand new to World of Tanks, because it has no armor, and it kind of has a certain play style where you would only be really good in this vehicle if you know the maps and you know good positions to go to, and you know how to be flexible and how to kind of change your play on the fly, depending on what the situation is, and depending on what map it is, and depending on the matchmaking, and these are all things you need to kind of... Um, go over in your head as you're playing a game, right? It's not like, say, the T26, you know, E4 Super Pershing, where you can just drive straight at the enemy and shoot. You know what I mean? It's It kind of has a, a very unique play style. But I will say, guys, if you are a flexible player and you're able to kind of do those things, um, I would definitely, definitely recommend getting the um, Kanon and Jagdpanzer. It's, it's just an incredible tank if you're good, especially with light tanks and stuff like that. So... If you know certain areas to get to, um, and you can work angles, it's it's really a beautiful tank. Uh, over the course of three battles, we did 1937 damage, guys. We did 257 assists. I would say this is an average session for me. Again, I do average like almost 1800 damage in this tank, and um, let's see what we can do. The exchange. I might try and exchange something, ladies and gentlemen. We are at 86, almost 87% on the mark, and I average 342 assists. So we're averaging a little over 2,000 combined. So yeah, this is a pretty average session, guys. But again, um, just in closing, I would highly recommend this vehicle to anyone who is being, who is able to be flexible, guys, and knows maps, and knows tanks, and knows positions, and all that kind of thing. Um, so... That's it, guys. Again, you can take a quick look at my setup here and, and the crew. I don't know if we discussed all this, but yeah, I too marked this thing with ease, and I think you could too if you're a flexible player. That's it, guys. I'll catch you for the next one. Hope you enjoyed. Take care, and bye-bye now.